ABC, what's up? It's me, yours truly. I am back to post a quick video here. Um, as I mentioned in my previous videos, still trying to play catch up, being gone for the past four weeks or so. So day before yesterday, I did a response to the 2022 vinyl tag, uh, the Walker version. And so today I'm gonna do a response to the 2022 vinyl tag, the young members of the VC version. So uh, let's just kind of dive right into it to take up the least amount of time. So question number one, favorite pickup from a trip? Which is a really cool question because I've, over the past 15, 20 years, I've been collecting vinyl. I have taken a lot of trips and have been to tons of cities and I uh, figured up one time I'm almost at a third of all the states as far as actually going around and checking out record stores in almost a third of all the states. So um, hopefully you're going to hit them all by, by the time it's over. But uh, one that really sticks out in my mind for whatever reason is this one here, which is uh, the Pipettes. We are the Pipettes. Um, and I don't know why this sticks out in my mind, but I was out in a conference in D.C. about 12 years ago. And I just so vividly remember going to this record store. I remember what the store looked like. I don't remember the name, but I remember what the store looked like. I walked in, blue carpeting, second bin on the left, top center cube. That's where I found this album. And um, I don't, for whatever reason, that's just seared in my mind. Uh, but I, I picked it up for $10 that day. Um, but yeah, so th that question just made me think made me think about an album again. So so yeah, that's the Pipettes. Really cool album, kind of a you know fun, poppy kind of thing. A favorite song off of here is Your Kisses Are Wasted On Me. So if you're not familiar with that, you know, definitely check it out. But uh, question number two, favorite Third Man Records release? You know, don't want to cop out with just going like a White Stripes type of thing. So that's probably the one I definitely have the most of. But uh, how about the dead weather and this is um sea of cowards um this is from 2010 favorite song off of this is probably blue blood blues but it was also kind of the song that, that first i first heard by them so but yeah definitely solid album good one to check out so we will go with that one question number three favorite country album I will say one of my favorite country albums, okay? Uh, but one that would definitely be right up there on the list is this one here, which is Allison Krauss and Union Station, Paper Airplane, a uh, fantastic album, S such a great mixture of country, folk, and even a couple of pop elements here and there, but just a really, really beautiful, sonically beautiful album. Um, so definitely highly, re highly recommend checking this out. And if you are a fan of the Old Brother Where Art Thou soundtrack, this is definitely an album you should check out because, you know, Allison does make an appearance on a couple of songs, I believe, on the soundtrack. And of course, uh, Man of Constant Sorrow, which is a, was one of the huge hits off of that soundtrack. Well, there's your guy that actually performs that. And he has a song on here called Dust Bowl Children, where you can just totally hear that it's, it's completely him in that same style. But Paper Airplane, Lay My Burden Down, On the Outside Looking In, and kind of everything in between. My Love Follows You Where You Go. Fantastic songs. So highly recommend that album too. Uh, question number four, a suggestion for the youngest members to pick up. I'm gonna go with this here, as this has been an album I've been suggesting for the past two or three years. Uh, the War on Drugs, A Deeper Understanding. Uh, why would I suggest this album? Because uh, back in 2017 when this came out, this is one of those albums that kind of restored my faith in modern bands actually making uh, good music again. <laughs> now, that's not saying there's not, not modern bands that don't make good music, because I have, you know, obviously a ton of modern bands. What, I'm, what I mean by that statement is modern bands that are really going back and pulling pulled out to me what was the beauty of early artists, legendary artists, and they seem to be carrying the exact same vibe. So when I first heard this album, I was just kind of ear dropping it in a music store where they were playing it and I was just kind of, you know, walking around shopping, kind of doing some passive listening, you know, when, you, when you're shopping. But uh, I just remember as I was walking around and listening to it, I just remember thinking like, man, that really sounds like a Bruce Springsteen song. 
and singing stuff like man, that sounds a lot like Bob Dylan and then that sounds like a guitar solo that Prince did like what is this that's playing and I went over and asked him and it was like the war on drugs and so that, that's kind of what I mean about harping back to some of the, like those type of names um, so yeah highly recommend this my absolute favorite song off of this is strangest things absolutely amazing so that's a recommendation um, question number five an album a youngest member has subjected you to uh, I was trying to think if there was a like an album that I had purchased or that had I didn't know about from one of the young members but nothing was really coming to mind that I can recall um, I mean it's hard not to we talk about just being subjected to it's hard not to you know know Emma or know her channel and not just think cheap trick 90 <laughs> like she's such a cheap trick fanatic that she will subject you to it so uh, that might be it just kind of as far as a group goes but I mean yeah they all listen to a lot of great music and a lot of stuff that kind of have in common with, with everyone um, but let's see question number six an album all youngest members have in their collection so without knowing everyone's collection from front to back and without you know obviously having haven't seen every single person's video if I were laying some money down I would probably guess they're all rock pop fans so they're probably gonna have a copy of Fleetwood, Fleetwood Mac's Rumors somewhere in their collection this is just kind of one of those mainstay albums that you just tend to well, actually kind of in a joking way, but also serious way. You know, I, I've known a lot of different owners of different stores and hang out and talk and, you know, blah, blah, blah. And it's almost one of the most common things in the world that you would hear is that Fleetwood Mac Rumors is one of the albums that basically keeps the doors open to brick and mortar stores. This is one of those albums that, you know, doesn't cost a fortune, but you know you'll, you'll be selling them at 15 20 dollars a pop all day long as many of them as you can get in your hands uh, matter of fact working at a shop yesterday i sold one yesterday afternoon um so it's just one of those albums that everyone just tends to have and i would guess that they would have one of these as well so that's going to be my guess on one that they would all have uh let's see question number seven um an album I hope to find in St. Louis or I think they kind of changed that to just like you know traveling period or whatever else but if there was one album that I was hoping to find even though right now for the most part I'm really just in complete opportunistic mode where I don't have like a gigantic specific list that I'm looking for it's just I might find an OG pressing you know that I didn't already have like a reissue I want to replace I might find an upgrade copy of something I already have I might find something I've always done but I just don't really have like a ton of specifics that I'm looking for it's just being an open open book and being opportunistic but one thing that would probably be on my list would uh is still an original pressing of John Coltrane's A Love Supreme uh, something in a, a solid very strong VG plus to excellent or above condition um, you know I'm sure at some point I could come across one that's really beat up and that type of thing but that defeats the whole purpose for me so that'd be the one thing I wouldn't mind stumbling across in some way shape or form that I could afford it uh, with trade or whatever else but um, question number eight a compilation with multiples or slash different artists I do have quite a bit of those I do love comps and this is one definitely one of my favorites in my compilations I would say uh, which is wild thing 2 LP set has, has about 25 songs on it somewhere around there but really really great stuff like wild thing by the trogs uh, my little red book by love hey Joe by the leaves Louie Louie by the Kingsmen I want candy strange loves a little bit of soul music explosion uh, 96 tears question mark and the Mysterians and just on and on and on so just a lot of really great just great old school rock right there on, on that album so a, a great 2 LP compilation I uh, really love my 80s ones too which are probably more of my favorite comps um, question number nine favorite release of 2021 so I'm thinking again that means actual new music for 2021 and not just a pressing that came out of old stuff 
So probably my favorite new album, new music to discover in 2021 is Gorgira. This was my introduction to them, so that was kind of awesome, but awesome new metal band. You know, they mix different styles of metal and it's definitely kind of the groove metal element that they incorporate in their stuff that really draws me to them. But this was their 2021 release and totally fell in love with them off of this album, which is Fortitude. So again, highly recommend checking them out if you're not familiar with them. Uh, question number 10, showcase colored vinyl or picture disc? Uh, I'll go with picture discs since number one, I don't have many. I don't talk about them much because quite frankly, I can't stand them. I have like three 12 inch and three or four seven inch, which actually was sitting in this little box right there. But I decided to share this one here, which is Catherine Wheel. This is a 12 inch single of um, Crank which is my favorite song by them, which is the only reason I even kept this picture disc. So, um, yeah, I've, I have just never been a fan of picture disc at all and definitely don't seek them out. And But anyway, again, one of my favorite 12-inch singles, so I decided to go ahead and keep that. Uh, number 11, a record with, a pur with purple on the cover. How's that for purple on the cover? Uh, this is Boris Heavy Rocks, uh, fantastic uh, kind of Asian metal. I can't really say metal. I mean, just kind of because they do a little bit of everything. Sometimes they're heavy. Sometimes they're just a little bit different. Just it kind of depends on the album. But um, yeah, as you can see there, very very purple. Um, it's kind of a funny story too. Obviously, you can see it's autographed. It got it got signed back in 2013. But it was really kind of funny when I saw them. Uh, like I was standing back by the sound booth. Another guy comes over standing by the sound booth and he and I start talking. And then a third guy comes over and he's sitting there talking to us and we're just kind of, you know, talking and talking. And you know, one of the things that is, is kind of common, just kind of in human nature, is that when it comes to really being able to distinguish features, like identifying features across different races, it could be, it's tougher to do it across races than it is to do it within your own. So we're standing there, and like I said, this Asian guy comes up, and he's sitting there talking, and we're just like, hey, you know, blah, 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 have a good night, and what type of music? Yeah, I really love this, and blah, blah. And then the first band comes on, and he leaves, and then Boris gets on after the, after the op opening band, and me and the other guy kind of look at each other and was like, holy cow, it was the guitar player for Boris that was sitting there talking to us the whole time, and we had no clue whatsoever. We're just talking to him like another dude that's there to see the show he's like no I'm there to perform the show so I'm glad I got a chance to meet him afterwards and I didn't tell him afterwards I didn't realize who he was when we were talking in the first place but uh, I got him to sign all my stuff that night which was cool but that was that was kind of funny uh, question number 12 a song with a name in the title let's go with a little Bobby teens and this is off their album Young and Dumb from uh, 2001. And the song off of here I'm answering for that question is Hey Roxy. So the name Roxy in that, that particular song. But fun little group, kind of a mixture between punk, garage. Well, it really is kind of more on the punk side, I guess. Uh, it sounds like this album was mastered or the mastering tapes from this album came from them performing in their garage. They had a little held handheld tape recorder they set in the middle of the garage and just hit record and then they used that to press and master the album so it's just very raw and silly and uh but cool stuff my favorite song off of it is secret date if you want to kind of check that out but I actually you no know, idea about the back cover there but yeah cool stuff uh question number 13 an album with a cheap trick connection but it can't be a cheap trick album immediately came to mind was this right here which is fast times at Ridgemont High and the connection to Cheap Trick is again it's one of those moments that gets seared in your mind when uh, Lamone who's one of the main characters in the, in the in the movie he scalps tickets and he's sitting by the football field and the bleachers trying to talk this girl into different tickets and he's like um, you know basically kind of gets down to Cheap Trick and he's like I want you to want me 
And then he goes, ba -da 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 -da. your mama's all right, your daddy's all right, they just seem a little weird. And then somebody comes in and interrupts him because she comes to tell him she's pregnant. But just like, for whatever reason, that little 15 second bit that he did right there, it's just, I completely and totally associate it with Cheap Trick up and down. And even if I ever hear that song uh, by Cheap Trick, I Want You to Want Me or Surrender, I immediately think about him doing that on those bleachers. So that's a that's that's my connection with Cheap Trick and, and my twisted memories. Um, what's the next question that we're on? Question number 14. Two albums that sound great back to back. And I am going to go with this here. Billy Idol from 83 and then Billy Idol Rebel Yell, which is from guess 83, 84. But not only do they sound great back to back because you know you could take any song off of either album and kind of interchange them and they'll sound the exact same. But to some degree it was actually meant to be that way because if you look at the back of the albums, on the original there you had side one and side two. And then on Rebel Yell, they made it side three and side four. So it automatically was meant to be a carryover from one album to the next. And there's your back to back. So <clears throat> I think that definitely addresses that question. Um, question number 15, sh shout out a favorite local record store. Well, as I kind of mentioned in that very first question, uh, you know, I've spent a, a lot of time over the years traveling to different stores different cities and and I don't just like if I go to a new city I don't just like find one store it's like I, I really spend a good chunk of time of bouncing around the multiple stores all the time and so one of the things that I can say is the St. Louis area is definitely blessed to have some of the best stores that you'll find in kind of one area um, and that's even kind of saying after spending the last, you know, spending a week in San Francisco and bouncing around, uh, spending, only spent two days in LA, so not as much time, but uh, over three weeks or two or three weeks in San Diego, bouncing around the different stores. And I've still yet to see anything as a whole that compares to what St. Louis offers from a, a store perspective. So shout outs that I have to give. I mean, of course we have Riverbend Records, Billy Hurst here in the VC and not just saying that because like you know Billy's my friend and I met you know blah 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 it's just freaking amazing the stuff that comes to the shop and how well stocked it is uh, music record shop mark downtown st. Louis same thing awesome shop amazing autograph stuff that they, with the connections that he has stuff you can't find anywhere else um, planet score another record store that I can't tell you how many, maybe hundreds of pieces in my collection have come from Planet Score. Fantastic shop, awesome guys. Um, Euclid Records, I mean two floors of just a gigantic pop rock, amazing pop rock section. A jazz section that'll just, you know, have you doing a second mortgage on your house. So amazing store there, Vintage Vinyl another store that's almost like a, a landmark type of store in the St. Louis area. It's that's right beside Chuck Berry's uh, restaurant. Um, and Dead Wax, um, the record exchange. I mean, and that's not even getting into the point of talking about the B-level stores in the area. So there's just, I have to give a shout out to all of them because like I said, we have an awesome, again, I'm a little west of St. Louis, but we have a freaking awesome selection of record stores in the St. Louis area and it would be more than worth your while to take a weekend to uh, you know come down and spend a couple of days just bouncing around at least half the stores if you can make it um, so th that's kind of my shout out uh, let's see next is question number 16 showcase a bootleg record I despised bootlegs up until the past year and a half or two years when whenever this company over in the UK started making these and they were putting out titles that we really wanted and the quality that we really wanted. And this is one of the the number of them that I, I've picked up. But um, lest we forget the best of Marilyn Manson, as you can see there, awesome piece on green vinyl. But yeah, they have made some amazing pressings of albums that we've just been 
you know, just dying for for so long. And this is just kind of a great example. So, again, it's just so weird because a couple of years ago, you couldn't get me to buy a bootleg if my life depended on it. I had none or two in my collection I bought by accident because they were labeled as import and not clearly labeled as bootlegs. But since this company, I've been buying them left and right. Um, question number 17, your favorite album by your favorite band. Even though my favorite two songs by this band are on their second album, Song for Song from Front to Back, this is probably my favorite album by them. When this is, of course, Godsmack, which is my absolute favorite band. So, awesome, awesome piece there. Uh, next up is your favorite or inspirational lyric. I would say one of my favorites because it actually hit tattoo status and I've never really thought about that with any other there's only two sets of lyrics that have hit tattoo status for me one is by the band Godsmack which is my pain is caused by my pleasure off of the song Moon Baby I love that lyric but then my absolute favorite is right here which is off of Metallica's Saint Anger which is from the song uh, Frantic and it's the the lyric um, my lifestyle determines my death style I freaking love that lyric. And and what I find is so cool about it is it's it's one thing to find a lyric that obviously connects with you because if you're going to tattoo something on yourself, you, you want it to make sure obviously it needs to really, really be about you and your connection. But the cool thing I, I, I find about that lyric is, number one, it pretty much incorporates everyone, like everyone in the world, and it kind of does it without judgment which I think is kind of hard to do sometimes these days where you're not telling someone to do or not do something with a grand, you know, something that you're saying about everyone. But to me, my lifestyle determines my death style basically says the way you live your life, the choices you decide to make, the way you decide to treat people, um, you know, just all the things that you choose to do in your life is somehow going to connect with your death style. Whether it's if you're doing stupid things, you get you know killed in stupid ways. I always say you play stupid games, you get stupid stupid prizes, or even just from the standpoint of the way you live your life is your death style one where people are going to be saying great things about your memories and like you're really going to be remembered for being impactful in someone's life or in people's lives, and on and on and on. Your lifestyle is going to kind of determine your death style in some way, shape, or form. So. Uh, just as simple and straightforward as that lyric is, there's something that's, when you really start kind of breaking it down, it just gets kind of deep for me on that level. So I think it's pretty, pretty awesome. So that's favorite or inspirational lyric. Uh, favorite piece of classical music, number 19. I had to pick two here because I couldn't decide between the two. So just real quick, uh, Carmina Burana by Carl Orff. This is the Philadelphia Orchestra. Um, one of my absolute favorite pieces. You know, I have about maybe four different pressings of, of this album done by different orchestras and choirs. And actually three years ago, I had a chance to see it performed live by the St. Louis Symphony. And it's just one of those grand things when you see it live with like the 100 piece choir and the whole nine, it's just gigantic, big, epic. And my absolute favorite classical piece. But it's tied with this right here, which is um, Basile Polidorus here. This is Conan the Barbarian soundtrack. And I always say this is one that people can sometimes easily sleep on because, you know, Conan the Barbarian, cheesy 80s, Arnold Schwarzenegger, you know, gladiator type, not gladiator, but, um, you know, all that type of stuff. But man, songs like Anvil of Chrome or Riddle of Steel and Riders of Doom, it's just gigantic, amazing, epic stuff from a classical perspective. And quite frankly, if you listen to those three songs I just mentioned between this and Orff, uh, you'll really kind of see they all fall on the same, same lines and you'll see why liking one, you automatically are gonna end up liking the other. Uh, so two great pieces there. Uh, number 20, best song from the past 10 years. You know, I just can't pick one song, so I didn't even try to do it. So I'm just gonna flash a couple really quick because I just I couldn't feel comfortable picking one. Strangest Thing by The War of Drugs I just showed. I'd be happy putting that on the list. 
Jason Isbell, Southeastern, this is from 2013. I would totally be comfortable actually putting a number of songs off of this. Uh, relatively easy, but Elephant definitely has to be on that list of one of the best songs of the past 10 years. Western Stars, Bruce Springsteen. Um, again, a number of different songs I can choose off of this, but I'm probably going to go with Chasing Wild Horses, even though God, it's hard not to put Hitchhiking there, but I, again, totally different video. There's about three songs I could pick off of here to say one of the best songs of the past 10 years. And Miguel, The Thrill, off of Kaleidoscope Dream, just another album that for the most part, R&B from 2000 on has been totally like this with me. 90s R&B, totally dig it. 80s R&B, really dig it. 60s R&B, golden, right? So all that stuff, 90s and back, is just total bread and butter awesomeness to me. 2000s has really kind of sucked for me, especially the 2010s and on. This came out in 2012, and it was one of the albums just made me kind of go, someone still gets it the simplicity but yet just some amazing stuff on here so the thrill is definitely one of the songs I would put in that category as well so totally cheating on those last couple of questions but hey work with me here so the last one here which was the bonus connect uh, cheap trip Johnny Cash kiss and Zappa all together Queen uh, all together like a connect five couldn't really figure out like a great way to do that so I'm kind of maybe doing a little bit of a cop-out way but still at least I can show something by each band because I know these are your favorite bands so I decided to connect them with quick storytelling through song titles all right so this is going to be the story about uh, Willie the pimp who liked to live some crazy crazy nights because he just always felt like he had nothing to lose or, or never had a lot to lose. So he was very comfortable with just playing the game of rock and roll all night, partying every day with young girls, which got him in San Quentin, where he spent a lot of his time in a place that was dark as a dungeon, which just made him sit there and think, all I want to do is break free. So that's my best att attempt at connecting all the dots with those bands, is coming up with a quick story about how a, a pimp got arrested and went to jail. So, <laughs> so anyway, there you go, BC. There's the next... Uh, 2022 vinyl tag as always let me know what you think and uh we will talk to you soon guys all right take care